Hello everyone, Storm101 here. Today I'll be tracking multiple severe, multiple areas can see the chance for some severe weather over a decently large region here over the next several days into early next week. We also got possible. We have the chance for some flooding across portions of the overhaul valley back into the central plains. Could be a big, big time snowstorm for portions of Nebraska, Colorado, and Wyoming. Some places may able to see over three feet of snow. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a lot of snow when you think about it. We'll take a look through some models, see what they say about the snowfall maps, but we'll probably start off with the most important part the current watch warning map and you can see here we do have these dark green boxes here these are watch flood watches in effect and you got some of these light green and you even got dark red right there and those are flood advisories and you also got a uh, flash flood warning for a couple counties in southern illinois then you got some red flag warnings across New Mexico. They'll be getting some rain out of the system here, which is some good news there. Winter storm warnings for portions of Southern California. Then you got winter storm warnings for the mountains of Colorado in New Mexico, not New Mexico, uh, Wyoming. And also these dark blue boxes, those are winter storm watches that are in effect, which may get expanded into more of Nebraska and maybe into South Dakota there. There's some uncertainties with the placement of snow across the, really across the northern plains. But other than that, it's mostly quiet at this point here, and that's going to change as we kind of get on later this week. So we'll start off with the severe weather side of things. This is going to be another important one. So we got a large margin of risk of severe weather, really anywhere from uh, Woodward, Oklahoma. That's liberal Kansas, I believe right on the edge, all the way up into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in a margin of risk for severe weather. And I don't really expect much of out of this. I mean, wind, hail is going to be your primary threats out of this. Tornado threat is not going to be there. Day two, which is tomorrow, we got a slight risk for severe weather across the Texas Panhandle and also for western Oklahoma. Tornado threat is there, both mainly for the Texas Panhandle. May get expanded, maybe get upgraded a little bit there. We're going to see damage winds are also hail is going to be there as well. I think that hail for it could get upgraded to significant territory. And by the way, southeastern Minnesota, luckily we did not have any tornadoes up here. But what we did have is some large hail up there. And we've been getting multiple reports of hail larger than quarter size in a lot of places. So we had some significant hail up there. As well, we also had some reports back across Kansas and I believe into portions of Missouri and Iowa as well. Got some storm reports. So, not too bad under then some of the big hail kind of around and near the Minneapolis area. That was probably the most <clears throat> recognizable event. Well, most re recognizable thing out of the event. But as we kind of move on to day three, we got a slight curse for severe weather. Expect this to shift to the west. Balls have been trending slower with this. So I'll say probably more for the Texas Panhandle, pretty much for the same areas. This could be seeing a severe weather risk tomorrow across those areas there. And then as we get to day four, which is, this is, uh, I believe this is Sunday, we got a 50% slight risk. Now, the models right now, this is trending towards really not a big setup at all for severe weather. We'll probably get to see a downgrade of a margin risk, maybe a slight risk somewhere in there, but I think the majority of these areas are going to get downgraded to a margin risk. I mean, most of it trending towards more of a weaker squall line. It's a little bit more broken up, not as organized as what it was earlier. The day five, day five is probably going to get interesting, which is predictably too low. That actually may change tomorrow. The areas I've got to watch for severe weather will be probably somewhere right in here. Now, let me get that a little better here. Probably somewhere right in here, approximately, 
could have a chance for some severe weather on Monday. That'll be something we got to talk about there because balls have changed later this afternoon here. Getting a little better agreement with it. So we may get to see a 15% for some of these areas. Probably not for everybody in here, but we're going to see about that. So let's talk about the severe weather threat. You know, you can see just off the screen there. For the rest of tonight, I don't really expect a whole lot of much of anything going on out there. Let's actually take a look at radar what's going on out there right now. And you can see here, it looks like we do have a squall line going on. Well, not really a squall line, but it looks like we do have a line of showers, at least heavy showers, moving to the east. This is going to get to my area soon, later tonight. But we really no severe thunderstorm activity, and we only have one severe thunderstorm today. That was in Southern Illinois, so that's about it, pretty much. And there's this is going to start turning into a flash flood threat situation, uh, where you're going to have multiple rounds of heavy rain. I mean, especially for some of these areas right here where I just circled, may be able to get to see multiple rounds of heavy showers over the next several hours. I mean, probably nearly most of the day tomorrow on Friday, some areas may be able to get to see a lot of water to go on some of these areas, which we do have a margin risk in place for excessive rainfall for some of those areas there. Really anywhere from central and over Kentucky, southern Indiana, southern Illinois, and also even including southern Missouri. And then you get to tomorrow, you got slight risk across northern Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas, southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, southern Illinois, and far southwestern Kentucky. Then you got day three, your slight risk is shifted up across Kansas and Nebraska. So there'll be some areas, could see some flooding issues out of this system. So I'm going to keep an eye on here. And here's the rainfall for the next five days. And you can see here, areas in red, that's a general two to three inches. And when you get into those, well, actually two to four in the areas in the red here. That's two to four and in areas get into this yellow here. That's four plus inches of rain. So some of these areas already received quite a bit of rain. There's still more rain to come. So this is definitely something we're going to be watching for over the next several days for some of those areas there that may be able to get to see some flooding issues. Okay, now going back to the severe weather side of things. So as we kind of get through today here, you can see here just off the screen here, some of these areas are experiencing multiple rounds of showers and probably some thunderstorms mixed in in there. And you can be seeing multiple rounds. When you get those multiple rounds, you can see some flooding issues. And look at the Texas Panhandle start to fire up here. Indicated by the HER model, you can see there. And what these black shades are, this is like uh, updraft holistic here. So this kind of gives us an indication maybe there's going to be some strong updrafts there. Maybe a little bit of an increased tornado threat somewhere in there. You can see here, we could see a couple supercells go on out there. If we could get a sounding out ahead of those storms. And that doesn't look right. Let's try the other side. Yeah, there you go. We're kind of nearby the supercell there. You can see here, pretty decent holograph here. I mean, I mean that's pretty, pretty decent. I mean, your holograph's pretty good. Critical angle, good. Definitely a lot of holistic going on and also plus wind shear looks to be some strong wind shear look at the surface wow that's a pretty extreme <laughs> pretty extreme wind direction and height however there is some calm winds with this you can see here with these bars here yeah it's the smaller the bars the calmer the winds are but the longer the bars or whatever whatever you can say there the stronger the winds are so the good news is these are not like very strong winds. I mean, that would be a, a ridiculous environment for tornadoes if that were to occur. Now we do have some cape in place. So this is a, generally a pretty good sounding here for some super silver storms that could produce really odd hazards. I mean, you can see with your Equinox is all the way up to 200 millibars. So there will be some hail with these storms as well. And they could be pretty large too. So that'd be something to keep an eye on. And you can see here, they could be getting multiple rounds of showers and storms. Didn't actually kind of get it to Saturday, which, you know, getting later in the afternoon. 
which is just the max of the run. You got some thunderstorm activity again for the really for the Texas Panhandle. So Texas Panhandle, I guess, looks like it could be seeing some severe weather, even a, even for eastern New Mexico. Some of these areas haven't seen severe weather in a long time. I mean, seriously. I mean, last severe weather season, I'm pretty sure it's been very quiet out across some of those, some of those areas. So it looks like severe weather will be, uh, be coming in as a threat for some of these areas for really tomorrow and Saturday. We'll move on to the high-risk dam. Goes a little bit further out with this. But you can also see here, pretty similar thing. And you can also see here, this is getting pretty late. You got a couple supercells maybe going on over into the overnight hours. Let's see if we could get a decent sounding by that supercell. It doesn't look like we're going to get a good sounding out of it. Maybe if we could get to the back end of the storm. See if we could get anything. Yeah, not really good soundings at all since we're kind of getting to the middle of the night. But if we probably if we go a little bit early on. Maybe go able to get something. No. That'd be a negative. So and you can see your thunderstorms do develop in the Texas panhandle. It doesn't really show good soundings really all from the uh the higher sand, but it does show some big thunderstorms could go off. So maybe the Toria Fred could stay low, at least what the higher sand indicates, but you could probably get still see some thunderstorms that could produce the chance for some damage winds and also probably some hail to go along with that. And then as we kind of get into Friday evening, not a lot going on. Only a couple supercells here and there across Western Texas. And then as you get to Saturday, bam, here's your squall line of storms. And some of these could be rotating supercells. And eventually this is all going to be becoming an organized line. And that's a pretty good holograph right there. I mean, your dew points you know, in the upper 70s, uh, not upper 70s, upper 50s. So you got some decent dew points, decent temperatures. I mean, generally in the upper 50s. Critical angle number, pretty decently high. Pretty good holograph you got going on there. You got a very large curve going on there. The larger the curve, the better opportunity a tornado could happen. And sometimes they could be a little bit stronger with a large curve photograph here i mean sort of led to felicity i mean those numbers are going to be pretty pretty darn high also your wind shear numbers are also going to be decently high too so overall pretty good environment for some severe weather out across western texas here and this is going to be continuing to move to the east here so this is now getting to saturday evening you can see here, that's a little bit of a better holograph there. But as we kind of get to the overnight hours, you can also see here, got a little bit of a cap there. That's where your red line, which is your temperature run, crosses the yellow line. That makes the air a little bit more compressed. And also, doesn't really make thunderstorms really develop. It makes it a little harder time for thunderstorms to develop. But it's still another decent sounding. I mean, you got a good holograph. It's actually better than the other one. Critical angle number is decently high. Overall, still another decent sound despite having the uh, uh, the cap in the mid levels or in somewhere around the low level jet. We also do have some wind direction and height going on here. You can see some winds coming from the southwest and in, well, not southwest, southeast and in. You got some other winds that kind of come from the, actually from the southwest. So there's some wind turning and high going on here. So. And also the winds are decently a little bit strong there. But overall, that's a pretty good sounding right there. And then you see how your storms really start to fall apart here. I mean, what used to be before, it's an organized line of storms developing somewhere in this region here and just blast east, organized. We're not really seeing that anymore with this. And that's actually the max end of the run. You may get, you may have a chance to see some strong, severe winds here. Well, not severe winds, but you may have a chance for some damaging winds along this line. So you may have a chance to see some strong storms. So you can see with the sounding here, 
non-skill like it was before. Cape numbers are pretty low. As well as some of your other stuff is still close to being the same. But with those cape nerves being low, you won't really see much of a uh, severe weather threat uh, with that setup. I guess I did not have the NAM pulled up, so let me pull that up real quick. Get the NAM on here. So yeah, the next one we're going to take a look at is the NAM. And this goes a little bit further out. It does. And it goes out 84 hours. Kind of gets to the early stages for the next severe weather setup. Which will be for some different locations here. We'll go to the south central United States here. So, see what the NAMs show. So, not as high resolution. So, it's going to look a little blocky. It's not going to look as impressive. But... You know, for higher resolution models, they're able to better bit pinpoint some of your heaviest rainfall, stuff like that. And, you know, the name all is not as high as resolution. You see here, some thunderstorms develop in the Texas Panhandle, move into the north, into Oklahoma, and eventually get into Kansas. As we kind of get to the next day, pretty much nearly the same thing. Supercells from southwest to northeast across the Texas Panhandle. Even for eastern New Mexico, maybe getting into as far east as western Oklahoma. And as you kind of get to Saturday, bam, got a lot of possibly strong, severe thunderstorms, really anywhere from southern Oklahoma to central Texas. We'll get a sounding out of that, just out ahead of the line. It looks pretty good. And sometimes the NAM can overdo things. So I don't think it'd be as terrible as us like this, but. Yeah, a pretty good holograph. Critical and good number is actually pretty high at 71. Ooh. On that. You got some pretty good summary winds here. So you got some wind direction with high going on here. Uh, story weight to felicity. Numbers are pretty high. You got a decent amount of wind shear to work with. Decent amount of cape. Looks like it's pretty good for thunderstorm development. So this is a pretty good holograph here. And this will be favorable for pretty much for all hazards. As well, and you can see how it continues to the east and it just dies out. And you can see here as we kind of get to day three. Actually, I'm at day four. And you can see here the storms are not really that impressive. If we get a sounding out ahead of it, we'll see what it looks like. Looks pretty terrible. You actually got a cap in between 500 millibars and 700 millibars. Not a good sounding at all. So, we're probably going to see a downgrade to marginal risk with this. We're just going to have to see. And then we got to watch for Monday. You see here some thunderstorms do refire. Possibly into eastern Arkansas, into southeastern Missouri. And that will be eventually entering southwestern Kentucky, western Tennessee, and also southern Illinois. So we'll watch for that. And we'll get a sounding out ahead of that see what it looks like. And no cape at all, pretty much. Uh, you got a lot of... Storm went to Felicity. Eh, you got a very small holograph look there. It's okay. I mean, you're missing the cape. But over, other than that, it's okay of a sounding. I mean, this is getting into late Sunday night into early Monday morning. So your soundings are not going to be that great with that. And I'm interested to see what's going to be happening afterwards. Because there could be a decently big setup after that. So let's take a look at the GFS. So, as you can see here, a lot of snow could happen across the mountains of Colorado, Wyoming, even into portions of Nebraska. Could see a decent amount of snow. Maybe as far north as southern South Dakota. Could see a decent amount of snow out of this. And like I said, it's going to be in the feet range of how much snow you could possibly get. And they're going to be experiencing some ridiculously high snowfall rates. I mean, we're talking about very high snowfall rates. I mean, it's going to be quite ridiculous. And that's what's going to cause those snowfall totals to be so high because of your snowfall rates. Snowfall rates is how much snow can fall per hour. If you do not know what that is, that's what it is. But what's been really getting my attention here? Let's kind of get to Monday. So your front is like right here. Could be some mixing across portions of the 
Midwest could be some snow, ice, sleet mixing in. Should also be as far south as northern Indiana. We're going to see about that. But then as we kind of get into Monday evening, you got a low pressure system. This system will be deepening as it moves to the northeast here. You got a decent amount of thunderstorm activity across the south up into Kentucky. So you do have a some so you do have a severe weather set, possibly a severe weather set going on here. And you can see here the sounding isn't that great in that region. If we kind of get into Severn, Illinois, it's a little better. And you can see here, yeah, your holograph is very compressed here. I mean, you're going to have some winds going on at 850 millibars there. It doesn't look to be... It actually doesn't really look to be that strong, actually. But either way, you got a very compressed holograph here. So the tornado threat is probably going to stay low if you're going to see a very compressed holograph like that. Also, your storm to felicity numbers are also very low. Shear numbers very low. Not favorable for, uh, for a tornado threat, but some of these storms can actually produce some hail. That's kind of in the co-core type of setup here but then you know that can obviously can change and as you kind of get into the middle of the night of tuesday then you got widespread showers and thunderstorm activity some of those could be strong and severe given with the dynamics up there and then as we kind of get to this point here so this is now getting to tuesday morning you really you really start to see some thunderstorms on going across indiana and western kentucky down to western tennessee but at this point in time, there's going to be a negative tilt trough going on here, and that can enhance your severe weather potential overnight. So we're going to watch for that closely there with that negative tilt trough. And European Mall basically shows the same thing. So for some of these areas in here, it could be an overnight severe weather threat. I mean, your CAPE numbers are pretty low, but some of your under numbers are there for some severe weather. So we're going to see about this here. I mean, another way you can get some storms to help, you know, get lift or whatever without cape is lap rates. So let's see here. And to have favorable lap rates, it has to be over a 7. So that's basically in the yellows and reds. If you're in the blue, it's not really as favorable. I mean, it's a little over 6.5. It's somewhat favorable. But the better stuff is when you get over a 7. And you can see here, as we into Saturday, you got some pretty good mid-level lap rates across the several planes. And you can tell where your system is. It's right here. And you can see where we have the mid-level lap rates in place. That's going to create some lift. And you'll get some snow. At times, very heavy snow out of that. See, as we kind of get into Monday... We gotta wait for this to load here. And you can see here with the cold core setup, like we're talking about here, you got some lap rates going on here, but kind of in the warm sector of all things, you don't really have much of mid level lap rates in place. So, so it doesn't look like it's not gonna have a whole lot of help for mid level lap rates for lift. We'll get a sounding out of there. Yeah, it doesn't look good. So, but we'll watch that closely here. Some probably going to change here but we'll see about that it's at hour 108 we'll be able to have we'll be able to see the higher the nam as iris canadian tomorrow so we'll probably have a little better idea with it your pmo like i said has the same thing with that negative tail trough and again you'll get heavy snow across the mountains of colorado and wyoming michigan into portions of nebraska and also for uh, south dakota you can see here where we have that negative tilt trough in place, which the European Mall shows a much more impressive negative tilt trough, which you can actually can tell by the uh, isobars here, where how they kind of go here, that they do show a negative tilt trough. Typically, when we have negative tilt troughs, you can have a pretty decent severe weather setup. And what it shows by the European model, you got some thunderstorm activity across. Well, not thunderstorm activity, but you'll probably have some isolated showers activity across Illinois, which from what I've remembered from somebody else's video, 
that has access to the uh, European model. There's some pretty good soundings out across the Illinois, so we're going to see about that. And also show some thunderstorm activity across portions of Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. So this will be a setup to watch here. And also to keep in mind, GFS has a progression issue, so I would imagine that the setup will probably be better than what it shows, just to be safe about it. Since it does have a progression issue, the European model is slower with this, and it shows a better setup for severe weather. So this is something to watch here pretty closely here in the end coming days. And then as we kind of get into this time frame right here, which I remember someone mentioned it in a tweet here on Twitter saying possibly a severe weather setup across the southeast. I don't think there really is going to be a severe weather setup. Even though you got thunderstorm activity, your low pressure system is pretty far north. If you can get a low to develop along this frontier, then yeah, you could possibly get some severe weather. But right now, not really seeing much of severe weather for it. But I cannot rule out some strong storms, at least alone at cold front. But that would be something to watch for now. Then we kind of get to a much quieter pattern. High pressure takes control. And this will bring in some below average temperatures. But this is only going to be temporary. You can see here it moves out just like that into the east coast by later this month. Let's talk about that snow. And I'm... And I'm sure everybody knows about this already. This is likely a glitch. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a glitch. 117.8 inches of snow. I'm pretty sure that's a glitch. That is not going to happen. I'll tell you that number one. <laughs> it's likely not going to happen. But it's also further south than what some of the other models are showing. Doesn't really show much snow across South Dakota, Nebraska. Both of the other models are probably a little bit more accurate, but also further north. We can take a look at to the high, really the uh, European model. You can see here snowfall mats are high, further north, but we do have some spots picking up at least three feet of snow. You can see. Whoops! I accidentally moved that. Let me move that back. So we're going to go at least through Monday here. And you can see here at least 34 inches of snow for southeastern Wyoming. Then you got some places in Colorado that can see over 30 inches of snow. I think it's a little accurate, but keep in mind, this is a 10 to 1 ratio. And your country area ratios, it's probably going to be a little higher. So, and so yeah, about that. And that's what the GFS shows. That's in country area ratio. NAM is under the country air ratio, and you can see here the snowfall toes are higher. It does have some places 61 inches. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. More than likely, probably going to be overdone. But it still shows some pretty high snowfall totals. Look at some of the mounts across Colorado. It's actually the lows of some of the, of the others. But also, it's further north. So Then again, this is just something to watch very closely here. We do have some uncertainties with the forecasts here. So, and again, this is just something to watch closely, but I will get get prepared now because either way, I mean, either way, doesn't matter the placement here. There's somewhere in this zone in here is going to get a lot of snow. Either way, somebody in there is going to get a lot of snow. Like I said, you know, it doesn't doesn't really matter the placement. I mean, if it's further north, somebody's still going to see two feet. But if areas that could get in the bullseye can be over three feet. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter all that much. Either way, you're going to get a lot of snow out of this. So, yeah, but then again, it's just something to watch closely here. Hopefully, balls can get a little bit better agreement with this setup for a lot of snow. But anyways, guys, that's all for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you already do like my channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you never miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, give me the comment section down below. I'll answer you guys' questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.